الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين Brothers and sisters, I'd like to start by uh, making a request. I generally, in fact, I never request that anything that I put on Facebook be shared. I leave it up to those who are receiving the content to determine if they feel that it is beneficial enough and worthy of being shared. Uh, but tonight, because of the importance of what I'm going to talk about, and the importance of the advices that I want to give, I really hope and humbly request that you will share this. Whoever sees this, watches this, that they will share it with others and that it reaches as many, as many people as possible in our community, whether our local community or our extended community, so that those people can ponder what we're talking about, this topic, and respond to it in their localities. That said, brothers and sisters, our topic this evening is a very somber one. I would, like to, I would like to talk to you about how the COVID-19 pandemic is creating conditions conducive for a social problem seldom talked about in our community, domestic violence. Domestic violence does not simply refer to abuse committed against women in a household but also encompasses abuse committed by women against men, adults against children, children against adults, and children against each other. Abuse is not limited to physical abuse, but also includes verbal, emotional, sexual, and psychological abuse. And it can take many forms, like strict restrictions on communication, with family and friends, behavior, movement within the home, and access to necessities like food, clothing, and personal hygiene. Since the outbreak, brothers and sisters, and the restrictions on movement has produced, several large metropolitan cities are reporting double-digit increases in domestic violence calls, and domestic violence arrests have jumped up as much as 27% in some cities. The reason for the increase is twofold. Due to stay-at-home orders, families are forced to spend more time in close quarters with their abusers and have been denied the refuge at work, school, and extra extracurricular activities outside of the home provided before the pandemic. The pandemic has also created acute financial stress that can trigger abuse. So many families have been impacted financially by the crisis and the fear of eviction, the fear of foreclosure, termination of utilities, insufficient sustenance, and the shame that accompanies all of that, often incite abusers to look for someone to blame and upon whom to take out their frustration. Brothers and sisters, the Muslim community is certainly not immune to these factors. And what can make Muslim households particularly vulnerable to domestic violence is our tendency as a community to look the other way and to consider it noble to cover for abusers rather than protect the abused. Brothers and sisters, none of us wants to wake up to the news that someone in our community suffered bodily injury or death due to an act of domestic violence that we could have prevented. For this reason, I call upon each of us to do our part in preventing what the experts are now calling intimate terrorism. People experiencing stress, anxious due to the perceived loss of control over their own destinies. I want to remind you to control your emotions rather than be controlled by your emotions. Once a, once a man Ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, O Sini. He said, O Messenger of Allah, advise me. Whereupon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La taghdab, faraddadahu miraran. He said, Do not let your anger get the best of you. And he repeated it several times. To people aware of families predisposed to domestic violence and or experiencing stressors, that may trigger it. 
If you are able to help and ease stress by discreetly providing essentials and offering financial assistance, please do so. In a hadith collected by Muslim, Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu narrated that he and other companions were on a journey and a rider rode past them looking left and right, trying to call attention to his pressing need. He didn't want to ask for help, but he wanted by this gesture to let people know, I'm in need. This perturbed the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, مَنْ كَانَ عِنْدَهُ فَضْلٌ مِنْ زَادٍ فَلْيَعُدْ بِهِ عَلَى مَنْ لَا زَادَ لَهُ Whoever has surplus food and supplies should give it to the person who has none and not wait for him or her to ask for what they need. If you know of someone who is in need, don't wait for them to ask. That request may never come, but the pressure and stress from their need may cause them to do what? To lash out to someone in their household and hurt them. And you could be partly responsible because you had the ability to do something to prevent that. Also, if you are aware of members of a family that are particularly vulnerable, keep your finger on the pulse of the situation. And if you see something, say something. Protecting the well-being of victims of abuse supersedes our desire to protect the reputation of their abuser. Also, the abuser needs our help too. And helping the abuser is performed, is completed. We can help the abuser by preventing him from committing abuse. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, Unsur akhaka valiman o madluma. He said, come to your brother's aid. Help him, whether he be the oppressor or the oppressed. فَقَالَ رَجُلُ مِنْ الْقَوْمِ A man from the audience, he said, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ansuruhu Ida Kana Madluma. Ara Afara Aita Ida Kana Valiman. Fakifa Ansuruhu. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, He said, I can help him if he's being oppressed. I know how to do that. But if he himself were the oppressor, then how can I help him? فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِ وَسَلَّمْ The Prophet ﷺ, he responded and he said, He said, تَحْجِزُهُ أَوْ تَمْنَعُهُ عَنِ الظُّلْمِ فَذَلِكَ نَصْرُهُ He said, stop him from oppressing, prevent him from doing the wrong that he is doing. In that way, you will be helping him. Finally, imams and the administrations of masajid. We need to work on coordinating with existing resources and creating resources of our own to provide solutions for victims of domestic violence and faith-based treatments for abusers. Faith-based treatment options for abusers. We are the shepherds for our communities and we will be asked about our flocks. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-wahid al-ahad. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-rahim. I ask Allah the merciful to protect those vulnerable people in our communities who are not just sheltering, they're not just worried about or have to fear, they don't just have to fear COVID-19. But they also, because they're sheltering in place to protect themselves from COVID-19, they have to worry about an abusive person or persons in their household. They're victims twice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them and to make us from those who facilitate their protection. Ameen ya Rabbal Alameen. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.